Now after the dance, dear ones, and the departure of the Lord, we apostles were all like men gone astray, and we fled in all directions. But even I, John, as I was watching him suffer, did not stay to witness his passion. Instead, I ran to the Mount of Olives, weeping over what had happened. Now that Friday, at about the sixth hour, after he had been hung upon the cross, darkness overtook the earth. Just then my Lord stood in the heart of the cave, filling the entire place with light. Then my Lord expressed to me, John, as far as those who are down in Jerusalem are concerned, I am being crucified. They are lancing me with spears and sticks, and giving me gall and vinegar to drink. Even so, I am right here, speaking with you. So listen close to what I say. I was the one who put it into your head to climb up this mountain, so that you might hear some teachings that a student can only receive from his master, and which a man can only learn from his God. After saying this, he revealed to me a cross of light, which had been set up. Now there was an enormous crowd around this cross, which was not of a single stamp, but within this cross there was both a unified form and a singular likeness. And I saw the Lord above this cross, shapeless and consisting of nothing but a voice. Now this voice was not like the one we were used to hearing, but heavenly, captivating, and kind-hearted. John, the voice conveyed to me, it is essential that someone hear these things from me because I am in need of someone who will hear. It is for your benefit that I sometimes call this shining cross the Word. Now at other times I refer to it as mind, or Jesus, or Christ, or the door, or the way, or the bread, or the sea, or the resurrection, or the Son, or the Father, or the Spirit, or life, or truth, or faith. And there are times when I call it grace. It is, in fact, for the sake of mankind that I couch it in such terms. Now, as it is understood in itself, and as it is spoken to us, it is truly the demarcation of all things, the raising up of and the basis for those things which have been set in place, but have hitherto remained unsettled, namely, the harmony in the wisdom and the wisdom in the harmony. But to the right and to the left there exist powers, principalities, authorities, demons, implementations, intimidations, fury, devils, Satan, and the secondary basis from which proceed the essence of ephemeral things. You see, this is the cross which through the word has brought all things together, severing off the transitory and lower things, and consolidating all things into one. But this is not the wooden cross which you are going to see when you go down there and neither am I the one thereon, who you do not see now, but whose utterance you now hear. I was taken to be something that I am not, for I never revealed my true self to those many others. They will think of me as something else instead, something that is base and utterly beneath me. As a result, even as the place of rest is neither perceived nor even discussed, I, the Lord over this place, will be perceived and discussed all that much less. Now the people you see crowded around the cross, which represents the baser essence, are not of a singular form, and the ones that you see within the cross do not maintain a unified aspect. This is because not every member of the one who has descended has been assembled together with them. But after human nature has been lifted up, when the kind who obey my voice approach me, then whoever is able to hear me will unite with it. It is to remain above them and will no longer appear as it does now. No, it will be elevated above them, even as I am right now. You see, I will never be as I once was as long as you do not speak of yourself as belonging to me. But if you should hear the things I have to say to you and take these words of mine to heart, then you will become as I am now. But once I have taken you to myself, you will become as I once was, for herein lies your source. Therefore, pay no mind to the multitudes, but steer clear of them instead, for they are far removed from the mystery. Recognize that I exist entirely within the Father, and that the Father exists within me. Accordingly, I never did suffer the things that these people will claim that I suffered. 
You know that suffering that I showed you and the others in that dance? Well, I want it to be spoken of as a mystery, for you see, what I have shown you is in fact yourself as you truly are. Even so, only I know myself as I truly am, and these other ones do not. Do therefore allow me to hold on to what is mine, and it is through me that you must perceive what belongs to you. As I have said to you already, it is impossible to see me as I truly am unless you can see me as one who is akin to me. You have heard of my suffering, but that I was not the one who suffered, that I felt no pain, yet my agony was real, that I was pierced, yet I was not injured, hanged, and yet I was not hanged, that my blood poured out, yet it did not flow, and in brief, in no way did I suffer the things that they will claim that I suffered, not at all. Even so, I have endured things that they never mention. But even now I will reveal to you the true nature of my sufferings, since I know that you will understand. Recognize me as the Word, and that the Word was what was put to death, that the Word was pierced, that the Word dripped blood, that the Word was maimed, the Word was hung, the Word was what endured the passion, the Word was nailed, and that the Word was what died. This is how I have expressed it, making place for the man. Your reasoning, therefore, ought to begin with the word. Then you will come to perceive the Lord, and in the third place, the man, and the sufferings that he has endured. After he finished telling me all of these things, as well as others that I could not express to you as he would have me, he was raised up, and no one in that crowd there noticed it. But later on, after I had gone back down, I laughed them all to scorn because he had revealed to me beforehand all that they were saying about him. Nevertheless, I held this one thing very firmly in my mind, that the Lord put every single detail into symbolic language as a gift to be given to mankind, that their hearts might be transformed thereby, and thus receive deliverance.